Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, hey. uh, nobody else who speaks, only you. So, uh, the next talk of the symposium, Paleogeography, a uh, growing bridge, is given for Dr. Fabio Pinedo. Dr. Fabio Pinedo is a professor of ecology and evolution at Universidad de Estadual de Campinas, and his research focuses on understanding the evolution of reproductive barriers between lineages and populations and the speciation of plants in the neotropical region, using the orchid genus Ipidendrum as model. A question for him can be asked in English, Spanish, or Portuguese. Uh, the presentation is uh, entitled The Evolution of Reproductive uh, Isolation Within Species, a growing bridge between phylogeography uh, and speciation. Uh, Dr. Pinedo is an honor having you here in the ADA 2021. Uh, Dr. Pinedo, you may start your presentation. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. So today I will talk to you uh, with one of the many bridges that phylogeography made. Uh, that is the bridge with the reproductive isolation and speciation. Okay. Just trying to pass the slides. Okay. So, um, thank you for all the organizers for inviting me to give this speech. And as I said, Phylogeography is a wonderful discipline because it bridges many different disciplines. It is a multidisciplinary field in its nature. And I found it fa uh, very fascinating for that because you can combine very different approaches in these studies to understand, for my, my interest is to understand speciation, how the speciation occurs and the first steps of speciation. Uh, for, for me, this figure represents what is phylogeography. It's a figure for a paper from Rosani Colevati from a tree that grows in the savannas of, in Brazil. And here in this figure, you can see how many fields the phylogeography can combine. And it can combine niche models, it can combine genetic analysis, uh, the reconstruction of the history of such lineages, and so on. So the, I found this fascinating. And I included one more approach in my studies that it's a more experimental approach because I study, I am particularly interested in the evolution of reproductive barriers in plants. And during my postdoc, I had the opportunity to combine a phylogeographic study with this experimental approach. Uh, the main objective of this talk is to show that phylogeographic studies provide an excellent framework to study the first steps of speciation. And why? Uh, because uh, phylogeographic studies, uh, they are most of the times uh, you study the genetic architecture among populations of the same species. Like in this figure, this figure is one of my phylogeographic studies with an orchid species. And you can see all these different colors, these pie charts uh, representing different lineages. But at the beginning of the studies, we treat all this variation as uh, 
variation from only one species, no? And they are di diverging lineages. And, but how is this level of di divergence enough to treat these different lineages as different species? No? So here at this point, you can include an experimental approach to test if there are some kind of reproductive barrier among these lineages. And in this is a figure I think that everybody knows. It's a figure uh, usually used to understand the process of speciation. And here at the beginning, you have, a, you have an ancestral species that along the time, it starts to accumulate some kind of divergence. And at the end of this diagram, you have two different species. And uh, you can interpret the process of speciation as a gradual accumulation of reproductive barriers among populations of the same species. Because in this stage, you don't have too much genetic divergence or morphological divergence. You, you can expect some ecological divergence. So a species is starting to explore different niches. And at this stage, you can expand some kind of incipient barriers uh, to gene exchange that, that, that are expressed as uh, the beginning of reproductive isolation among these, between these two lineages. No? And as the divergence, pro, as the process of divergence proceeds, you start to accumulate more, more divergence, morphological, behavior divergence, phenological divergence, some many, many different types of divergence, and the reproductive barriers become strong. And at this stage, you, you can clearly identify different species because the reproductive barriers are very strong and they preclude any gene exchange between these two, these two, two populations. So it, it's very easy at this stage to recognize different species. But I am interested in. Um, at the beginning of the di divergence, where the barriers are still forming and they are not easy to recognize. According to this author, to Via, in this paper of 2009, uh, you can adopt or I adopt an approach that they call magnifying glass approach where I explore the process driving reproductive isolation in the situations where speciation is not yet complete, where the divergence is occurring among populations from the same species. And sometimes, and for that reason, phylogeographic studies are excellent because most phylogeographic studies are studying the divergence that occur within populations from the same species. Uh, in this study, for example, with uh, Imenea, uh, it's the Jatoba, a uh, tree occurring in the Brazilian savanna. We can see, again, many different lineages represented by different colors and this phylogeographic study can, can be used as a framework to test reproductive barriers within these species. You can use the lineages that you, you recognize it in these species to test if there are barriers to gene exchange, uh, what kind of barriers they have, if they have phenological barriers, pollinators barriers, what they have, what is the degree of divergence that these lineages have? 
and uh, the, this genetic divergence among li lineages they are translated in reproductive barriers because in the phylogeographic studies you can recognize they as genetic the genetic difference among li lineages and this genetic divergence may cause many genetic incompatibilities among divergent lineages. For example, in this example, you can see that the pollen grains of the hybrid are sterile, they are entity, no? And this occurs in the same species, in crosses between populations from the same species. So the hybrid is here, the hybrid between populations is not a hybrid between different between different species. And here, as, as I said before, during my postdoc, I could test this approach, including an experimental approach in a phylogeographic study that I did with this orchid species, Epidendron denticulatum. In this study, I had the opportunity to combine the genetic analysis, the classical genetic analysis uh, performed in phylogeographic studies. So I could recognize the different, the different lineages. I used niche models to try to understand the environment that the species was occurring and trying to reconstruct the demographic the history of the species. But I also included crossing experiments. I had the plants in cultivation, and I know it already for what lineages they belong to. And I used this information to guide me in the crossing experiments. At the end, I get this image. It's very complicated at first sight, but you can see it here that the black lines they represent the, the compatibility uh, relationship between the lineages. So you can see some lines that are very black, and these lines represent the, the lineages are fertile, but other lines are very thin, and they represent a strong reproductive barriers between the lineages some lineages have zero compatibility like these two the h4 and h10 look when i cross these two lineages i get zero uh, zero percent of viability in the seeds so this is very impressive when you consider that this is just uh, a result obtained within one species and in this recent study that I published this year, uh, we could identify again a reproductive barrier between the mainland and an island population of another epidendrum, Epidendrum fungus. Here I'm showing the map where we can see this blue haplotype that it occurs only in the island, the island of Alcatrazes here in the seashore of the Sao Paulo state in Brazil. And here are the population, the yellow populations and the other ones, all of the other populations occur in the mainland. We can see here in the haplotype network that this haplotype in the island is very different from the haplotypes that occur in the mainland. And when we cross it, the plants, mainland plants from mainland and from the Alcatrazes island, we could observe a strong reproductive isolation between the island population and mainland populations. And again, showing that phylogeographic studies can be used uh, to start this approach to test for uh, the existence of reproductive barriers among divergent lineages. And if we can see, uh, I just finishing my talk, I included this image 
for this classical book. I think everybody interested in phylogeography should read this book from John Weiss. Uh, and this figure is very interesting because it shows that along the time, the divergent lineages accumulates different levels of genetic divergence uh, because they have a dispersal barrier here and they accumulate this divergence. And uh, for that reason, that phylogeographic studies are excellent they offer an excellent opportunity to test for reproductive barriers because you can you expect different levels of reproductive barriers along the time as the lineages uh, proceed to their divergence and you can use this information to guide you in such experiments as predicted by darwin darwin when darwin made this draw of lineages in his book. This is very interesting because it is very similar to an aplotype network. And Darwin discussed along all his life about um, ecological, ecological pressures of, for lineage divergence. And he discussed a lot about different pollinators in plants, different environments, the degree of isolation of islands. The and this is, is wonderful. It's wonderful that uh, during uh, the, our current days we can find similar diagrams in our phylogeographic studies. So there are many interesting perspectives for future for the future. Uh, one, because phylogeographic studies, including experimental approaches, are, are still very rare. Despite all the advantages of including such approaches, I, I I know there are some organisms that would be difficult to to make this, uh, to include this experimental approach, but we have to look for suitable organisms to do that. The use of next generation sequencing, we are also increasing our ability to detect early divergence lineages and to characterize divergence alleles associated to reproductive isolation. In plants, the ones related to pollen pistil interactions, cytonuclear incompatibilities, and many other uh, natural history features of plants and animals too. So uh, we live today, all our technological advance offer uh, great opportunities to test for the evolution of reproductive isolation using a phylogeographic background. And now finishing my talk, I would like to thank all the students from my lab and colleagues from other universities to helping me to explore in deep the evolution of reproductive isolation in very interesting plant groups. And I also thank the financial support from FAPESP, CNPq, and copies, they, they are very important to us to fund our studies. Thank you, everybody, and I am here available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Pinedo, for such, a, such an interesting talk. Uh, now uh, we have uh, some questions. Um, I'll help with the questions. Uh, so the first question is from, uh, it's in English, it's from Lara Bacaro. Uh, do you feel the scientific community could reach some kind of consensus about what species limits are? Uh, so this is a very interesting question. I think that um, 
it's very difficult to reach a consensus because we are talking about very different species. I believe in species, but I believe that in some groups it's very difficult to, to study species limits. And if you, because one, uh, we can, we need to consider the whole diversity of organisms in our planet, and each organism uh, have a specific reproductive barriers, and some of them, in some of them, they are very difficult to identify. So I think. Uh, for that reason, considering the whole diversity of life, uh, each group of organisms will need um, a specific approach to the limit species. That it's very difficult to find an approach that would be would be universal to all kinds of organisms. Perfect. Great question. Great, great, great answer. Uh, so another question here in Portuguese, I will switch to Portuguese, uh, é do Gilberto Bergamo. Em estudos com organismos fixados, você acha que é possível inferir barreiras reprodutivas a partir das características da gametogênese depois de uma confirmação com o estudo filogeográfico? É, bom, I will answer in Portuguese too. É, eu acho que é, esses alelos, ele precisa encontrar alguma conexão desses alelos com algum tipo de barreira reprodutiva. E essa é a nossa a fronteira do conhecimento neste momento, né? Você conseguir entender. A gente sabe que a divergência genética é fundamental para o início dessas barreiras reprodutivas, porque elas causam as incompatibilidades genéticas no início, né, do, quando essas barreiras se formam. É, agora, quais são as incompatibilidades genéticas importantes para esse, para esses eventos, né? Muitos dos estudos filogeográficos trabalham ainda com a diversidade é, neutra, né, a diversidade genética neutra, que não é adaptativa. Então, nós precisamos, nesse universo de divergência genética, tentar, é, tentar peneirar, tentar identificar quem são os alelos responsáveis por produzir essas respostas de incompatibilidade. Né? Essa é a fronteira do conhecimento, atualmente, que deixa os estudos, que deixa essa área do conhecimento bastante desafiadora né? e, e bastante interessante. Muito bom. Uh, agora, I will change to English again. The next question is from Natalia, Dr. Natalia Ortiz. Uh, which criteria do you use to establish the boundaries among species? <laughs> Everybody is looking for a magic, <laughs> a magic method to delimit species. Uh, I believe I, I, I follow different studies uh, studying reproductive barriers now in plants and animals. And I think one important step was made by Coin and Orr in 2002, because they write in a book called Speciation. So everybody interested in the speciation process should read this book. And the main message of this book is that even uh, you can recognize two different species, even if they don't have complete reproductive barriers. The complete reproductive barriers you will find only in very old lineages that have accumulated a lot of divergence along the time. But this is only one part of the species that we have around. The other part, they still have the ability to exchange genes, but they also have partial reproductive barriers. So my point of view is that if you can demonstrate that two lineages have already some degree of uh, reproductive uh, isolation, and, and if you have a good ecological explanation or some, some other uh, line of evidence that you can use, 
you can recognize them as diverse as different species. Uh, I because they have already some some degree of reproductive isolation, and this will limit the gene exchange between them. So this is my point of view, and some authors uh, believe in this approach. I think it is valid. Uh, not, but how much reproductive isolation? This is still a, a, an open question. I think if the if the research should have also a good ecological explanation associated with some degree of reproductive isolation, this will be a good start. Right. Uh, Dr. Natalia has already uh, said thank you for your for your answer. Uh, let me just ask Madeleine if we if we can stay for one more question. I think there is one more question. Can we stay? A little Absolutely. More? Go ahead. Take your time. Okay. Uh, so the, the last question is from Lara Bacaro, it's in Spanish, uh, I will read it in Spanish. Uh, ¿Cómo definiría la unidad evolutiva? ¿La considera dependiente del enfoque del estudio? Or how, how could you sure. define the, the evolutionary yeah. unit? And, um, and if it would depend on the focus of the study. Oh, okay. Uh, so I want to say in English. Uh, I think that again, this will, I, I believe in the unit of the studies. Again, I, I believe in the existence of the species. I, I disagree with the, uh, if you cannot identify species or you have so much uncertainty in recognizing species, maybe they don't exist. I disagree because we are unable to identify many things, but uh, we accept the existence of such things. So I believe in the existence of species, but we can also uh, associate it with my, this, this definition of species. We need to accept that species are dynamic units that change all the time. And they change by one of the main reasons they change is because they exchange they have gene exchange with other species. And gene interspecific gene exchange is very dynamic. There are periods of time that these species are completely isolated and other periods that they are only partial isolated. Because as the, uh, we know now, all of us study phylogeography, we know that the environmental is also very dynamic, it changes along the time. There are some periods when the species are isolated and other species that in other periods that the species came into contact again. So it should, the, the definition of species should be dynamic and connected with the, because it, it is natural from, from the species that they, they change over time. They are all units that change and we have to accept that. And we need uh, methods and instruments that can handle this dynamism, this, this dynamic nature of these entities. So I don't know if it was too confused, but uh, more or less like that. And the reproductive isolation changes over time and changes geographically. They are, there are some populations that are more isolated than other ones. And for that reason, again, phylogeographic studies are excellent because the huge amount of data collected by phylogeographic studies can be used to explore in deep these particular relationships in some locations, what is happening in pairs of populations along its distribution, etc. Perfect. Uh, there was some, one question about the, the book that you mentioned. I just pasted the link for the book in the chat. Is the coin and ore speciation book, right? Yes. Okay. Exactly. I just I just pasted the, the link. Year is 2002. 2002. Perfect. 
and yeah, I pasted the link in case anyone is interested. And cool. there's a lot of uh, compliments here, amazing answers. Muitíssimo obrigado, obrigado. So yeah, I think we are we are good. Uh, you answered all questions. Thank you very much, Fabio. Thank you very much, you too. And good luck with the Congress, the conference. Thank you very much. <laughs>